Welcome back everybody to the time of the week where we get in our kitchen with a bunch of different ingredients and we just do our best. <laughs> Today we are going to make something that is gonna be pretty challenging, I would say, just because I am A, not good at cooking and B, I've never made this before. This is a recipe that's rich in flavor, but even richer in history. But we're gonna make pozole today, which is a traditional Mexican soup or stew, but it is a dish that is very popular. And a lot of people told me that they love it and had it growing up or have it a lot currently. And it's, it's just something that people like. And I feel like I'm kind of missing out here because I like things that taste good. And all of the ingredients that go into it, I'm down with those ingredients. So, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Don't answer that. Don't answer that question. There was a lot of good recipes on the internet for pozole. There's actually even more good videos made by people both just at home with their traditional pozole that they grew up eating and their mom made for them and their grandma made for their mom. And there's also, you know, recipes that are more kind of refined and served in restaurants and stuff. But I figured out there's pretty much the same group of ingredients in Pozole, regardless of how you make it. Cause I know people put different types of meats and some different spices and some different toppings, but for the most part, you need a certain list of ingredients to make it that special flavor, which is pozole. So we're gonna do our best. I went to the store and I got a whole bunch of ingredients. They look really nice. They look full of flavor and spicy and everything that I love in ingredients. So cuddle up on the couch. It's nice, cool weather out. Perfect time for some pozole, some warm, rich, delicious soup. And let's just all really, really hope that I don't completely fuck this up. Good? Let's do it to him. So this is a recipe that takes between four and five hours. So you're gonna need some time because you gotta let it do its thing, all right? You gotta chop things up and put it all into one pot and just like, don't look. Give it some privacy, give it some time to develop itself and grow as a soup. We're gonna start by preparing the initial part of the broth. So I think traditionally this dish is made with pork. Since we don't have that, because we don't eat it, we're gonna do our very best with here with this. This is Beyond Sausage. It's not the Italian kind, which I felt was the right call. It's the bratwurst kind. And I'm, we're gonna use this as our meat substitute. Obviously it's gonna change the flavor a little bit. If you were to have pork, it's gonna taste a lot different than this. But I think this is, of all the options we have, this is gonna be the closest to the flavor we're going for. So we're gonna take this entire package and chop these up and put it in our pot to get the stock going. But first I wanted to show you you're gonna need the biggest can of hominy that you can find. Look at this can. They had other sizes, but I was like, we need the biggest one. What is hominy, you might be asking? Uh, it's like pretty much corn, I think. It's just like a different type of corn. For comments or suggestions, I'm gonna call them later. Got a lot of suggestions. Anyway, this is sort of the corn that goes in Pozole, it's made, it's, I feel like hominy is more of a, a Mexican ingredient. So we need four pounds of hominy. This is a big old, we're gonna make a big old pot here. Hopefully it doesn't overflow and make a whole mess. That would suck. So we're gonna just, I'm just kidding, we're not doing that. We're gonna take our can opener and we're gonna open up this giant ass can of hominy. And then we are going to Strain the liquid because we need hominy, not hominy juice. You know what I mean? I'm gonna quickly measure out, what is it, four pounds? We really need four pounds of this thing? All right, here we go. Whoa, this is really interesting looking, actually. And I kind of want to try a little piece. Is that weird? Hmm, wow. That is really good. It literally tastes exactly like I described it. It is like Mexican corn. It honestly reminds me of the masa arena when we made our own corn tortillas, which by the way, I think we're gonna do later for a little side dish to our pozole. So let's get four pounds. Jesus, should I half this recipe? These are really good. I kinda wanna just eat those, damn. We're gonna do our best with our measurements here. 
And by do our best, I'm really only gonna pay attention to the measurements when it's convenient for me. So the pork shoulder, which you're supposed to use for this recipe traditionally, is supposed to be cubed. Now we have uh, these sausages, so they're in link shape. So I'm gonna cut them once lengthwise, and then I'm gonna chop them up the short way to get them in nice small pieces, but not too small. It's pretty incredible watching recipes of pozole made by people who have kind of perfected it because every little thing that you add to this dish provides like a really important flavor that makes the dish the way it is. We are gonna put our Le Creuset, our pot right here, on our cooktop and get that ready. Our first stop here is gonna be our pork substitute. I'm gonna put this whole thing in here, easy. Then we're gonna get our garlic and we're gonna peel eight cloves. That's gonna go in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, we're gonna add the bay leaves, six bay leaves. We're gonna work with what we got here. I think you're gonna need a few onions, but I only have this one. Again, this is just for the stock for flavoring. You're not gonna actually be eating whole onions. You're gonna put two entire halves of an onion in here as well. And lastly, we're gonna pour all of our hominy into this pot. And now we're gonna cover it in water. That's like the perfect amount. I didn't even measure it. We're gonna take our big ass soup spoon and we are just gonna make sure everything's kind of underneath, submerged, ready to go. And what you're gonna want for this is you're gonna bring it to a simmer, and once it's at a simmer, you're gonna let it sit for two hours. So you're gonna have to find an activity to do while this is simmering and doing its thing. Another thing uh, that's gonna happen, apparently, is our little pieces of hominy, they're going to pop, sort of like popcorn. That is why we have the two hour marker here, because that is supposedly how long it takes for the hominy to pop. So we're gonna give this two hours. Look at this beautiful, I'm sorry, this is just really pretty already with all these ingredients. I'm fucking psyched, dude. I'll see you guys in two hours with some popped hominy. Popped hominy, that is my new band name. I called it, you can't take it, it's mine. See you in a couple hours. Okay, I'm sorry, but I lied. It's not been two hours. I just missed you. I couldn't stay away from you. Can I have a hug? Can I have a hug? I actually wanted to get some of the adobo sauce done while we were waiting for our beautiful pozole stock to simmer and get a little bit cooked and ready. And there's a few actually interesting steps we have to take to make the adobo, which is gonna be like a red puree sauce, which is eventually going to go in the pozole and become part of it. So you're gonna need some onion and garlic. And what I did, which is specifically what the recipe asked for, is you're gonna char the onion and the garlic, whether it's cooking it on a grill top or holding it over the open flame on the stove, something to get a browning and char on both the onion and garlic because char means flavor. And what the char will do is bring out a certain flavor in the onion and garlic that otherwise you couldn't get. And so I just carefully browned this onion and garlic a little bit. We have, I don't know, six or seven cloves of garlic and an onion. Since we have both of those charred and ready, these are gonna go directly into our adobo, which we're going to make using our wonderful Vitamix. So we can put this in the blender just to hang out right now. That looks pretty good, but we're not ready, so calm down. What we are going to do, we are gonna take our bunch of guajillo chilies. These are dried out, and these are gonna give an amazing rich flavor and color to our soup. So I'm gonna take maybe 15 of these. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13 for good luck. And we are going to cover this in boiling water. Let me just pop on my Superman glove. And we have boiling water right here, so we're gonna carefully submerge our guajillo chilies in this boiling water. And this is going to soften these up so that they're ready to become blended and part of the adobo sauce. So I'm gonna try to submerge them 
And we're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes. So once these are all soft, we can finish making our adobo in here. This is actually really fun. I can already see the water changing color. It's like getting like darker and red and a little bit green kind of, I think. And I think what you're gonna wanna do is keep the liquid that we soak this in. Cause we might be using it to add to the adobo for sort of like you would do if you're making like a pasta sauce and you keep some of the pasta water. I mean, there's no starch in chilies, but you're keeping some of the flavor. So instead of just adding water to make the adobo, you're gonna add flavored chili water to make the adobo. So we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes till they're soft and we're gonna get cooking. Our chilies have been soaking, having a nice little time in the hot tub. Now it is time to get blended with our onions and garlic to make our adobo sauce. Right here, I have one serrano and one jalapeno pepper, and we are gonna add these to the adobo as well. Now we're gonna pull these out and try to de-seed them as best we can, because we don't want this to be like piping hot with spice. We want some spice. So you're gonna pop the stem out, that'll open up the pepper and let the seeds kind of drop out as well. We're gonna rinse and repeat literally until we have all the peppers into the blender. The thing is, if we make it too spicy, you can't unspice it. You can always add more heat. I'm not big on planning in recipes, but that's one thing I've learned you can't really undo. This is actually starting to look pretty cool and delicious. I have no real idea what to expect from this soup. I mean, I've heard it's just delicious and I know the ingredients, so I can expect some sort of flavoring that I've had before. But at the same time, this is very, if I do this right, it very well could blow my mind. And in turn, it will blow your mind, okay? This recipe will blow your mind, guaranteed, maybe. All right, there's one more underneath. Let's grab this puppy. Pop it in here. We are gonna add our, calm down. We're gonna add our Mexican oregano. And I am going to just scoop up a little bit of this liquid, because we're gonna go for a texture similar to pancake batter, is what the recipe says. So get everything nice and cozy in there. And let's get our blender. Let's just give this a shot. See how adobo goes. Oh, baby. Okay, that looks like it worked surprisingly well. Whew. Dude, it's not even that hot, but I just got like a whiff of like pepper smoke that just, and steam that just went into my face. But to taste, it's not overwhelming. It's not like overwhelmingly spicy. It's got some heat to it, but not too much. So we're gonna strain our adobo sauce. Oh, this, this is uh, not the right size. Let's do it here. We're gonna get <laughs> a more appropriate size container. And this is gonna take some time, but we are going to just strain the adobo through the strainer here to get it completely smooth and perfect consistency for our soup. This might just take its time, to be honest. Well. Now is the time when we are going to let this strain through and let our pozole finish up. We need our hominy to pop. We need the flavors to settle in. We still have about 30 minutes until that's been two hours. So we are going to just give it some time. This, you know, we gotta let this recipe breathe a little bit, okay? Because it's gonna be worth it in the end or it's not, but regardless, it takes some time. So just, I don't know. Play some Candy Crush or something. Okay, we are nearly there, y'all. We've made it a long way. I'm proud of us. This is something so new, but I'm like so excited about it. We need a receptacle. Let us use this bowl that we have not washed yet. And we're gonna take some tongs. And as we get to the point where the pozole broth is gonna be done, we're gonna need to fish out some of the bigger things that are not gonna end up in the final soup, like this big ass onion. So we're gonna get out all the onion pieces. It's kind of separated by now. We're gonna take out the bay leaves. If you used an avocado leaf, which I could not find for this recipe, 
You're gonna take that out. This is all just gonna be compost or trash or whatever. Bay leaf, bay leaf. Garlic, yeah, we're gonna take out the pieces of garlic as well. Those are whole cloves, so they shouldn't be too hard to spot and extract from the bowl. I'm starting to think that the sausage we chose for the meat substitute is actually working pretty well. It like, it seems to be providing like a ton of flavor. Just from smelling it and the look of it, the broth is looking nice. Got a little redness to it. Oh, but just wait, you wanna see redness? Once we add this adobo, it's gonna be red up in here. Now we are going to add our adobo, which we strained most of, couldn't strain all of it. Uh, we're gonna add this. I wanna add like three quarters of it first. And let us grab our spoon and stir it in here. Hopefully this is not gonna be too spicy, but I don't think it will be. We de-seeded most of those peppers. And even if it is spicy, I'm not gonna complain. Look at this color. This is honestly beautiful. So now we are going to, since this is a pretty big pot of soup, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and some cracked black pepper. And let's give it a nice little stir. And we're gonna let it sit and simmer with the um, adobo added in for a little bit so that can kind of cook down and thin out a little bit. Also, we don't need to cook it as long as the traditional pozole because a main reason why you're gonna cook this traditionally a really long time is so that the meat cooks all the way through. Since we don't have that issue to worry about, we can cut the time short, I think. Let's taste it. Ooh, ooh. what the heck? That's really good. It needs a little more salt and it needs to simmer. So let's let it do its thing for just a little bit. I'm telling you, this thing is almost done. Switch it to the burner behind me. And as you can see right here, I chopped up some of the garnishes. We can finish chopping them up right now. We're gonna need cabbage, cilantro, and radish. I will chop up the radish now. We're gonna want some really thin slices. Radish really be watching his diet because every time you see radish, that shit is thinly sliced. Eh, let's, let's dig into that one too. So we have our toppings here. I'm going to set this aside and we are going actually to prepare some homemade corn tortillas. Just like our girl Janet taught us when we made Doritos. So you're gonna need masa, arena for this, some water, salt, and then a tortilla press. Why did I get rid of this? I'm gonna need it. What am I doing? What am I doing? All right, we're actually gonna need our cooktop to cook the tortillas. I'm done. But we're gonna do about a heaping cup of masa harina into our bowl. Once we have the masa flour or masa harina, we're gonna add our salt, nice little pinch of salt. And we just wanna mix it around so it's kind of homogenous before we add the liquid. And now we're gonna add around a cup of water. So we got half a cup here and another half a cup. We are gonna stir it, get it into a nice little dough. Oh, I'm so excited to make my own corn tortillas. I had so much fun when we did this last time. If you've never made your own tortillas, couldn't recommend it enough. It is a really fun cooking experience and they turn out so much better than store-bought tortillas. Oh my God, it's insane. And they're easy. I mean, if I can do it, come on, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? This looks to be a pretty good consistency, actually. Kind of nailed it on the first try, I think, hopefully. I think maybe a touch more water. All right, so this would be one massive tortilla, so we're not gonna do it that size. We're gonna take little golf ball sizes. And I'm just gonna set it on my work surface here. Got three, probably make five of these, I think, with how much we have. Four, and the last one, five, done, easy. What else you got? Oh yeah? What else you got? So next we are going to take our tortilla press. I love this thing so much, dude. And we are gonna press and cook our own tortillas. And by the time we're done with this, our wonderful pozole. Are you gonna be ready? Showtime? I think it's gonna be ready. It just told me it was gonna be ready. So we're taking its word, but we're gonna mash some tortillas, home make them. They're gonna be hot off the griddle. And then we're gonna eat a nice, beautiful Mexican feast.
Hello. Hi, a small food. Kai have. <laughs> you have. Kai. Yeah. You ready for yeah. some pozole? Wait, that looks so good. Oh, baby. It is. Whoa. <gasps> Wait, that looks so good. Oh. Okay, Jenna. It is time for pozole. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Putting a little garnish. We got our cabbage, our cilantro, and our radish. Got to make it look nice. And homemade corn tortillas. Whoa! Are you ready? Well, actually, we need to show it off. I have never tried this. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. I know it's supposed to be moderately spicy, but not too spicy. That's supposed to be pork. Instead, I used vegan sausage. I don't know. Give her a shot. Let me know what you think. I can tell you, as a fan and connoisseur of soup, I'm gonna like it. You're a connoisseur of soup, a kind of soup. Mm. Is it good? Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm a fan. Wait, that's so good. Wanna try it with some tortilla, oh, like God, dip yeah. it in. So it's it's called hominy. It's it's a type of corn. It's almost like a corn if if it were a bean texture. Okay, that is so good. Do you like it? Mm. That is really good. I'm sure wonderful Mexican mothers everywhere are laughing at how I did this, but I did my best, and honestly, I think it tastes pretty damn good. Yeah, maybe it's not completely authentic, but it's still really really good. Oh, the lime tastes so good in there. It definitely needs a little bit of lime. So don't forget that part like I did. So, it's not too spicy, right? But it has heat. Mm -hmm. It honestly is really flavorful for having like no meat in it. Yeah. You're supposed to cook it with pork and you're also supposed to cook it more or less like slow cooking it for mm. like hours and hours and hours so that the pork can really like give off the flavor. We're using fake meat, so we didn't need to do that, but I think it still oh, gave good. off a good flavor. Well, it's not like other mm. soups that I've had, you know? The lime. Right? You're so right about that. Mm -hmm. The lime is huge. I told you, Silvino told me. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, the lime makes it so good. You need lime for this. It like makes all the flavors come out. Yo, okay, I'm a fan of pozole. This is a new soup that I really like. I I'm really also like the corn in here. Yeah, I'm also a fan of the hominy. Like, what is that? I'm gonna link the recipe that I mainly followed for this. This is a recipe, depending on how you ate it as a kid or how your family made it, it can vary like with a number of different ingredients. Like you can make this a lot of different ways. And supposedly this gets better I with leftovers. Like it, yeah. yeah, so like tomorrow this will be better. That's so good. <laughs> Pretty bomb, right? Yeah. Do we do it to him? Really? I'm pretty proud of this. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was, I was as astute to directions as I've ever been for this, because I wanted to. You've got to be respectful. I want to be respectful and do it right. I know this is a really important dish to a lot of people. Oh my mm. god. Definitely make homemade tortillas when you do this. Definitely do that. Why do I feel like the first bite was like really good, but then like the tenth bite is better? Yeah, it gets better, doesn't it? Yeah. It's weird because like the flavors kind of combine as you eat it. Kermit's crying in the background, by the way, because he wants dinner. Well, um, honestly, I'm happy we pushed ourselves a little bit outside of our comfort zone. We did it, okay? I know this is a little bit uncomfortable, but sometimes you just gotta try something, you know? Because you never know when you're gonna make just the most incredible soup. This is really good, and Jenna loves soup, and she's a soup connoisseur, so if she gets, you know, gives it the stamp of approval, I think, I think it's safe to say we, what we do. We did it to him. I didn't step outside of my comfort zone at all. I sat on this butt and got fed. Is that your favorite part of my videos? Mm hmm. Part where you get to just eat for free? Mm hmm. Not to help. Oh, that's so good. It's bomb, right? Oh. I'm, I'm like weirdly looking forward to leftovers. This is gonna get better. Like fine wine, baby. Like fine wine. Mm. Also, if you have a fanny pack, you can just pour some in your fanny pack and snack on it later. Perfect snack on the go. Well, I am. Pretty damn happy with how this came out. I'm sufficiently exhausted. I mean, this was a long recipe with a lot of specific steps and ingredients, but I, you know, 
it pays off. It really pays off. Do I have anything in my teeth? Would you tell me? Would you even tell me if I did? You guys want some corn tortillas? Here you go. This is a good idea. Oh my God. Oh, that one took a dip. I think it's time for me to get out of the kitchen. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna link the recipe and the video that I watched, which uh, kind of pushed me over the edge and inspired me to make this. <sighs> Thank you guys for your suggestions. I wrote pozole down on my Google Doc of video ideas for food to make, and I didn't even know what it was because you guys were suggesting it. And it turns out it was a bomb ass soup that, <sighs> man, it's like rich and a little bit of spicy, but like with the lime kicking in, it like pulls out all of the flavors together and then the sausage we used, I mean, dude, 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 dude. Can't even understand this. I'm giving you all one bite, okay? Only take a little bit. No fighting. Don't fight over the bite. Here you go. I'm just kidding, it was my bite. Okay, thank you for watching. Thank you for doing it to him with me. I feel like I'll be enjoying this soup for many days to come. If you're considering making it, just do it to him, just try it. Tweet me a picture so I can see how much better yours is than mine. I'm used to it, it's okay. My feelings aren't hurt, I don't mind it. I'm just gonna pour some of this in my fanny pack, go for a jog. See you later.